Hello again, thanks for watching. This is another Quick Tips video from Go Engineer. My name is Joseph Catrano. Today's task is to install Enterprise PDM, and that's also going to include installing the Solid Network License Manager. So if you're faced with either one of those tasks, this video should help. Two scenarios really for getting started. Either you have the disk, a media kit was delivered, uh, after purchasing EPDM, and that media kit would contain two DVDs, a Microsoft SQL DVD and an Enterprise PDM DVD. I've already installed Microsoft SQL on this computer. If you're dealing with that task, uh, it is a necessary first task. You can find a video here on our YouTube channel for the installation of Microsoft SQL 2014. So I'll go ahead and jump into this download. If you've downloaded PDM Enterprise, possibly you wanted to get the latest service pack, this would be the file name that you pulled down from SolidWorks.com. If you double click that, it's a self-extracting wizard and it'll pop up with a WinZip extractor and offer to extract this to a default location on your C drive. I've already done that, so I'll go and open that folder under my C drive, SWDist. Now what we're looking at here would be the same as the contents of the DVD. If you have the DVD and you right click and say open, this would be the same files there. In either case, you want to run the auto run. And there's some good information here. Don't skip ahead too quickly. The admin guides, it might benefit to open up the install guide. There's also an administration guide in that same directory. We can go ahead and install. Much of this installation is going to be a very self-explanatory wizard, so we're gonna be clicking next a lot, including on this welcome screen. We do need to accept the license agreement and choose next. Enter your username and organization, choose next. The default installation is for the program files is selected there. Um, I don't need to change that. And this really is the first section where we need to choose uh, some specifics. The client installation, obviously that button, radio button, would simplify just installing the client. Likewise, we could simplify installing the server by going here. I'd like to open up the custom so that we can look at the different components. I'm gonna install the client separately for a different video, so we'll go ahead and X that off the list. The two required, three required rather, components are the archive server, the database server, and starting in 2015, the license server. So don't get in too big of a hurry here. We do need to get that up and running. I'll click next. Enterprise, as you probably know, uses Microsoft SQL for its database architecture behind the scenes. So this screen is asking me to point to the SQL server. In my case, it's the same machine, but in any case, you would just type in the computer name there. The lower section there is for is how you would want the application to access the databases. It does need a username and password to access Microsoft SQL. There's a built-in account, and we covered that during the SQL installation, uh, and that built-in account is the SA. So I've just used my SA password here. If there's some security reasons to not use the SA, you may want to create other SQL built-in accounts. As long as they have DB owner access to the vaults, uh, to the databases, uh, that, that will work. I'll choose next there and install. After some time, the archive server configuration dialog appears. And the main thing here is to ask, where do you want to put the archives? So as users are checking files in and out of the vault, it is transferring, copying a file from their client machine, whatever changes they've made or if it's a new file, and then storing it on the archive. So this folder is where the raw files are going to be. I'll leave it at the default there on program files, but you may want to point this to some disk drive where you've allocated um, a fair amount of space for, for the raw files to reside. Anytime you create a vault, there is going to be a built-in user. That admin, A-D-M-I-N, is always present in a vault. 
And for any new vault, you can specify the password here. I'm just going to throw a simple password in there, and I understand that I can change that for any vault. But for when initially when the vault is created, this will be the password of that built-in admin user. The archive server also has to communicate with the database, so it needs that uh, SQL user login again here. Choose next. On this screen, I can specify what groups could attach to the vault or administer. It may be beneficial to specify a group. Maybe you've got an engineering group already on your directory or uh, an all users group. And you can select a group there and transfer those over uh, to either attach, administrate, or both. This screen allows me to specify the login type for file vaults. SolidWorks EPDM login allows me to create users in the vault software in the EPDM admin tool create the users from scratch Windows login would pull all of those usernames passwords emails etc from Windows Active Directory and then the LDAP would pull from a Novell directory I'm going to just use the SolidWorks Enterprise PDM login understanding that this means the users will have potentially a separate password than the password that they use to log on to their computer. And finish. The install shield wizard for Enterprise PDM has completed, but you'll notice popped up in the background is the Solid Network License Manager. So we'll go ahead and proceed here. On this screen, I need to specify my serial number. The Solid Network License Manager is designed so that you input your serial number or numbers during the installation. And then by going after it's installed, you can go to the Start menu to activate those serial numbers. But you can't open the, the application once it's installed and add new serial numbers. So I'll go ahead and be certain to add the serial number here while I'm installing. And if I needed to add another serial number later, per, perhaps for, a, for another SolidWorks license that my company had acquired, I could come in here and separate those with a comma and just go ahead and add the rest in. But you would need to modify the install under Add Remove Programs to go in and change or add serial numbers. I'll choose Next and accept the default program files location and install. Once that completes, we'll get a confirmation dialog. We can choose finish and then back to the SolidWorks EPDM application and can see that the installation was successful. I'll go ahead and exit. I don't need this folder anymore. So one important step is to now under all programs, you should see SolidWorks and we can open the tools folder to find that new SolidWorks network license manager. Now you may already have licenses for SolidWorks existing, but I do need to activate my new EPDM license. So an email is required here and then EPDM will activate automatically over the internet. We can see there that I've got my licenses in place and finished. So now we know that EPDM is activated. It's communicated with the servers. This software on my machine has communicated with the servers at SolidWorks and verified that I do have rights to the software. Another point that's worth noting is that if I were to add some licenses, I've called my sales rep and added five more viewers he says, okay, great, uh, just reactivate. In order to reactivate, I would just open this application again from the start menu, go to modify, activate or reactivate. And there's also a transfer license, uh, which is worth noting for if, if we're moving the EPDM server uh, to another machine. So I'll just activate and reactivate just for the sake of exercise. And again, it's just communicating over the internet with the database at SolidWorks to verify entitlement. I can finish that and finally close down the license server. 
It may be necessary to start the license server, uh, but you can verify there that that is going to be started. Now that I have EPDM installed, I can verify by opening the archive server configuration and recognize that that is started. And then there's also a database server configuration tool. Another way to verify that EPDM was successfully installed is to verify that the services are running. So by opening the component services on this machine, I can look and verify that the local services have been installed and look to be running. So there's my Solid Network License Manager, there's SolidWorks Archive Server, and there's SolidWorks Database Server all started. So that's the install of Enterprise PDM on the server side, including the SNL, Network License Manager. Hope this helps. Again, thanks for watching. Please leave us a comment if you'd like to see a certain video or if you have any questions. Also, I plan to do an, a client installation on a separate video. So if you need to go ahead and get the clients installed after uh, this installation, uh, feel free to uh, look for that video right here on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching.